Coming up on First at Four, coronavirus concerns are canceling sporting events across the country, including the SEC tournament and the Boys and Girls Sweet 16. And we'll take you to one Eastern Kentucky college changing their plans for the rest of the semester due to the coronavirus. And our severe weather alert day continues as strong to severe storms will move in this evening. First at Four is next. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. We'll have more on major developments today related to the coronavirus in just a moment. But first at four, severe weather could move across the state tonight. There's already a tornado watch out in western Kentucky. Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel joins us with more on the timing of those storms here in eastern Kentucky. Paige? Well, see, we've kind of been talking about it throughout the past 24 hours, and now it's here. Now, we're not seeing anything in our area quite yet, but those showers and storms expected to pop up in the next really just few hours or so. But we're going to take you up to the SPC outlook. We are still in that slight risk. Remember, that's a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale. That enhanced risk for parts of Wayne Pulaski, Rock Castle, and a very small sliver of Jackson County. That's a 3 out of 5 on the severe weather scale. This map did update right at 4 o'clock. Still waiting for that to come down, but on Honestly, I don't think we'll see a lot change here with that four o'clock update. Satellite and radar showing those clouds increasing. We want those to increase because we saw that sunshine earlier that'll help fuel storms once they do start to move into the mountains. So you're seeing some cluster of storms over into parts of western Kentucky, and those are going to continue to move into our area. Really just dealing with some rain, though, over into parts of Bowling Green, up into Louisville, and up into Indiana and Illinois as well. Some stronger storms over there, and there's that tornado watch that has been issued for parts of western Kentucky. For us here in the mountains, some of us are in that flash flood watch as we head throughout the rest of the kind of overnight hours. This goes until about 3 a.m. And we will likely either see a tornado watch or some type of severe thunderstorm watch be issued probably in the next couple of hours for definitely some of our counties here in the mountains. That's something we'll keep a close eye on. We'll talk a little bit more about the timing and impacts coming up in a little bit. All right, could be a busy night ahead. Paige, thank you. We are still at eight confirmed cases of coronavirus in Kentucky, but the governor still says that number will increase. There is no new major recommendations today, but he and health leaders are still encouraging Kentuckians to avoid crowded areas. WYMT's Phil Pendleton had more on what the governor had to say this morning. There were no new drastic recommendations given today. The governor did reiterate a number of the steps he's been talking about for most of this week, such as people avoiding crowded areas, especially those 60 and over and those with some of these chronic health conditions like heart, kidney and lung disease. The governor also did not make a recommendation about schools, but that could change very quickly. We noticed the number of changes in the Capitol for it being cleaned more frequently to the chairs being placed further apart in the rotunda for rallies. There was a mental health rally there today with a sparse crowd and usually this session those rallies have been almost standing room only. We're spreading out the chairs uh, in the rotunda. Uh, this morning's uh, NAMI event uh, showed that, that responsibly doing one of those means you have a much smaller crowd uh, that is spread out. We also today learned of a bill that it's working its way through the legislature that could add up to 10 non-traditional educational days for school systems that are calling off classes or closing because of the coronavirus. At the state capitol in Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. The governor says as of now there are no plans to close the capitol to the public. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee announced an emergency declaration in that state amid virus concerns. Lee said the order allows the volunteer state to receive additional funds from FEMA and relax laws to help fight the spread of the coronavirus. Tennessee currently has nine confirmed cases of the virus. Well, the virus is affecting the sports world in a big way unlike really anything we've ever seen. The rest of the SEC tournament was canceled today and the Kentucky High School Athletics Association is now canceling or at least postponing events as the coronavirus threat spreads. That includes the rest of the girls Sweet 16 and next week's boys Sweet 16 at Rupp Arena. For one school in Martin County, this hits hard. WYMT's Buddy Forbes was there when the school got the news. 
Today has been anything but sweet for the Martin County Cardinals. They were preparing to represent their county at the Sweet 16 for the first time in more than 30 years. Now it's been canceled. What started with news that the Sweet 16 would continue with limited attendance quickly turned into a tournament cancellation. We were all scared this morning that something like this was going to happen. After a season of hard work and dedication, the guys were looking forward to giving their all at Rupp Arena next week. Now they are just waiting to see if and when that will happen. They're all they're, they're devastated. They didn't even want to talk right now. So, um, but I, I did see the wording has changed from cancelization to postponing. So that at least gives them some hope that we'll get played at some point. Supporters say they hope to soon see a new date posted for the Sweet 16. And until then, they stand behind their boys 100%. In Martin County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. And coming up later, we'll have more reaction from the Cardinals and some of the fans who are looking forward to painting Rupp red. Now, speaking of the Cardinals, South Laurel was at the girls' Sweet 16 today, but the game they played was not the biggest storyline coming from the KHSAA. WIMT's Tommy Poole is in Lexington with reaction on the suspension of play. Tommy? Yes, yeah, Steve, and it's really sad that it wasn't the big story of the day as they did beat the number one team in the state, but that was quickly overshadowed by the news. I'm going to step out of the way real quick as you see an empty Rupp Arena. This is what the arena will look like for the rest of the weekend and next week, as well as after that South Laurel game, the KHSA announced they would be suspending the tournament indefinitely. Now, after South Laurel's game, they announced that over the loudspeaker, of course, after the announcement, fans could be heard, could be heard booing. The KHSA Commissioner Julian Tackett said, the situation is less than ideal, but the association received recommendations in the first quarter that suggested the tournament be suspended. He made sure to say that it was not canceled as, quote, there may be a way we can finish it. We don't know, end quote. This thing could be two weeks long. It could be two months long. It could be a year long. We don't know. I hate it for these young ladies uh, that didn't get to finish their tournament, and I certainly hate it for the guys next week. But um, sometimes life gets in the way of your plans. So let's hope that all of these techniques everybody's using of social isolation and not getting out in crowds and all these CDC guidance brings a quick end to this. Now Tackett said there is no definitive deadline on when the KHSA will make a final decision, but they have to be careful not to step all over spring sports and graduations. He also said resuming a tournament at a different location is doubtful due to the contractual agreements that they have with Rupp Arena. Of course, teams, coaches, fans all dejected after hearing the news as they find out that the road to a state title could be one with dead end. We'll have more on that coming up tonight at six. But for now, from Rupp Arena, Tommy Poole, WYMT Mountain News. Yeah, you got to just feel bad for all the seniors uh, out there that uh, thought they had at least one more game to play. Tommy, thank you very much. Several colleges in our region are taking precautions to protect its students and staff amid concerns about the coronavirus outbreak. WYMT's Will Puckett talked to Union College officials who are shifting classes to all online. Wednesday, Union College joined the list of institutions of higher education who are transitioning away from face-to-face -face instruction. Students and staff spring break will be extended a week. When students return, they will have classes online for the foreseeable future. Dorms and the library will be open to students so that those who may not have access to a computer or internet at home will not be adversely impacted. Upon arrival back to campus, the school is also offering optional screenings for COVID-19. We really are just keep communicating with our students. You know, even after you, if you come back on campus, um, you know, at any point, you know, we're going to continue to closely monitor you. Feel free to reach out to us and we'll get, you know, uh, help you get the, the medical attention that you might need if you're not feeling well. All of this is subject to change. Right now, union officials say this does not impact spring sports because those events are held outside. All of the recommendations currently coming from both the NAIA and the Appalachian Athletic Conference are for events held in a closed space. Again, that also is subject to change. In Barberville, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. Nearly one in three families in the U.S. did not seek medical care during the past year because of the cost. 
And that is what a report from Bankrate found. The care included everything from doctor visits, medication, vaccinations, annual exams, and eye exams. Bankrate says the results come at a time when access to health care is critically important for mitigating the coronavirus. President Donald Trump spoke to the nation last night amid the growing fears. The president enacted a 30-day travel ban on people coming in from Europe. The UK and Ireland are not included in that ban. Those coming home are required to be tested first. Now, stock markets reacted negatively to that this morning. The Dow Jones suspended trading shortly after the markets opened in an attempt to stop the sell-off. But the slide continued. Let's look at the final numbers now just in. The Dow closes down today, down more than 2,352 points. And the Dow has now fallen more than 20% from its last peak on February 12th. The state auditor is calling for greater transparency on the use of state aircraft by elected officials. Auditor Mike Harmon says most flights former Governor Matt Bevin took lacked documentation on their purpose. In a report released today, he found most of those flights were on aircraft operated by state police. Under current state law, he says the purpose of those flights does not have to be documented. The report reviewed state aircraft use between January 2016 and September 2019. Bevan left office, of course, in December. Straight ahead on First at Four, neighbors are heartbroken to learn remains recently discovered are those of a missing Tennessee toddler. And we'll talk a little bit more about the timing and impacts of tonight's stormy system next.